Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Gleason, and welcome as ESPN Classic presents the 1986 NCAA Midwest Regional Semifinal between Kansas and Michigan State. KU reached the Sweet 16 by hammering North Carolina A&T and Temple 65-43 in the first two rounds. To keep its Final Four drive alive, Larry Brown's Jayhawks must contain the feisty Scott Skiles, the 1986 Big Ten Player of the Year, who's led the Spartans to wins over Washington and Georgetown in the Big Dance. Anything differently to stop him? I don't. I don't think you can. I. I just know that um, you know Cedric can cover as well as anybody, and if he gets gets 25 to 35, he's going to earn them. And uh, and I think he's capable of doing that. But I don't think that's going to necessarily mean they're going to beat us. I'm just going to play him to the best of my ability. That's all I can do. First team All-American Skiles was the nation's second leading scorer in 1986, netting 27.4 points a game. Later, we'll profile Jayhawks head coach Larry Brown, but now let's head to Kansas City for the Sweet 16 matchup between Kansas and Michigan State in the 1986 NCAA Tournament here on ESPN Classic. CBS Sports presents the NCAA Championship. The road to Dallas winds through Kansas City for a Midwest regional game between Kansas and Michigan State in sold-out Kemper Arena. Kansas hopes to return to the glorious era of 30 years ago. In the mid-50s, it was seven-foot Wilt the Still Chamberlain, who was a dominating factor during a period of Jayhawk excellence. In the mid-80s, that role is filled by Danny Manning. Only a sophomore, Danny Manning has already attracted massive national attention and is regarded by many as the most complete tall man currently competing in the collegiate ranks. Though just shy of seven feet tall, he's blessed with the agility of a point guard. And though leading his team in scoring, he's perhaps the most unselfish man on the Danny Manning, the Big 8 Player of the Year and a second team All-American in this his second season. Larry Brown is now in his third year on the Lawrence campus and the much-traveled coach seems to have quietly found his niche. Michigan State coach Judd Heathcote, now in his 10th season in Lansing, is a bit more animated, perhaps because he believes the magic is back. It was just seven years ago that Urban Magic Johnson dazzled basketball fans across the nation, leading the Spartan season culminated by the school's only NCAA title. Now Scott Skiles has Michigan State fans dreaming of a return to the throne. The 6-1 guard from Plymouth, Indiana, has roared into controversial national prominence in this his senior season. He's a wizard on the court in all phases of the game and has been more responsible for his team's success than any other player in the nation. It's Kansas against Michigan State next. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Kemper Arena for this evening's Midwest Regional Semifinal Game between the Michigan State University Spartans and the University of Kansas Jayhawks. Now let's meet the starting lineups. For Michigan State, at forward, a 6'8 senior from Sterling Heights, Michigan, number 35, Larry Collins. For Kansas, at forward, a 6'11 sophomore from Lawrence, Kansas, number 25, Danny Manning. For Michigan State, at forward, a 6'6 junior from Detroit, Michigan, number 23, Vernon Carr. For Kansas, at forward, a 6'5 junior from Omaha, Nebraska, number 44, Ron Kellogg. For Michigan State, at center, a 6'8 junior from Buffalo, New York, number 40, Barry Fordham. For Kansas, at center, a 7'1 senior from Wichita, Kansas, number 30, Greg Triley. For Michigan State, at guard, a 6'2 junior from Flint, Michigan, number 13, Daryl Johnson. Michigan State, at guard, a 6'1 senior from Plymouth, Indiana, number four, Scott Skiles. And for Kansas, at guard, a 6'6 senior from Kansas City, Kansas, number 35, Calvin Thompson. And 
introducing the head coaches for Michigan State in his 10th season, Judd Heathco. For Kansas in his third season, Larry Brown. Both teams are high-scoring outfits, and they have excellent shooting teams. Look at the field goal percentages. Michigan State a slight edge at the free throw line. Uh, the defensive edge runs to Kansas. The officials tonight, Hank Armstrong, Bobby Dylu, Dibler, and Pete Pavia. Larry Pollock will jump against Greg Dryling as we're set to go in the second game here from Kansas City. After North Carolina State held off Iowa State by a count of 70 to 66, that game was a North Carolina State route in the first half. They led by a 40 to 29 score. Iowa State came back to tie it at 47 all with a strong surge early in the second half. But then Benny Bolton and Ernie Mott surged down the stretch that gave North Carolina State the victory. Pollock wins the tip. It'll be Scott Skiles trying to get to the ball. He can't. But it was touched last by Kansas, and Skiles will inbound. Calvin Thompson comes down to immediately go into a press. Now Ron Kellogg comes down to help him, and Daryl Johnson brings it across the timeline, wearing number 13. NCAA champions in 79, all-time tournament record 12 and 4. Here's Pollock, top of the key. Right side to Daryl Johnson, looks for Skiles, goes to the free throw line, takes the jumper, gets the bounce, and rolls in. Cedric Hunter brings it across the timeline. Kansas 26 and 16. Last NCAA championship in 52. Underneath the Greg Dryling. Off the glass and the rebound taken up by Ron Kellogg, number 40. Trips and falls. The score is tied at two. That ball tipped away. It'll be Michigan State to inbound. A lot of concern, of course, on Coach Larry Brown's part about the, the physical condition of Ron Kellogg, who hasn't practiced at all because of that very sore, sprained arch of his. And I think they're going to really try and test him, that is, Michigan State, to see what kind of defensive player he is, because normally he's an excellent defensive player. Kansas immediately opens up in a man-for-man. That's all Larry Brown likes to coach. Now Scott Skiles with a head fake travel. And a little confrontation early as Calvin Thompson comes over and takes the ball away from Skiles. Well, I, I tell you, as an old ball player, you like to play with somebody who's got a lot of confidence. There's the matchup, Cedric Hunter on Scott Skiles, a clear walk. You like the fact that Skiles is in that triple threat position, though, and he's one heck of a competitor. We are tied at 2, 18.57 to go first half. Darling top of the key, left side to Cedric Hunter. He hit 73%. Big eight competition. There's Thompson with the alley-oop. And here comes Michigan State, down by two. Vernon Carr across the baseline. And Darrell Johnson saves it. Thompson's got a little mental war going on right now with Scott Scowls. After that slam dunk, he gave him one of those playground stairs. Foul is called as Pollock loses the ball. That foul is on Ron Kellogg, number 44, his first team first. James said has been playing with a sprained metatarsal arch in his left foot. It happened to him a couple of weeks ago. He did not start in the tournament opener against North Carolina a &T. Did play some last week, but Larry Brown is concerned if he has to go the distance tonight, if they win, he might not be ready for Sunday's game against North Carolina State. Here's Giles with the fake. Daryl Johnson guarded by Danny Manning. Back to Johnson. Long rebound. Pollock struggles, but gets there. Larry Fordham looks back for Johnson, almost stolen by Manning, and the Michigan State the impact. You talked about that Ron Kellogg has also got to be a little concerned about his conditioning, too, Vern, the fact that he hasn't practiced. He has been riding a stationary bicycle to try to maintain that conditioning, but a big difference between game situations and riding the bicycle. Skiles back to Vernon Carr. Long rebound out to Ron Kellogg. It's a 2 on 5 break, so Kansas will go back to Danny Manning. State does a good job of getting back on defense. Got a little bit of a trick defense here. Kansas tries to get it inside to Manning. They do, and Manning hits the jumper. And he can maneuver with all kinds of pressure on him. Certainly one of the most agile big men around. 
First basket for Vernon Carr saves the lead to 6-4. It's two points, 17-25 remaining in the first half. Now, Coach Brown said he's going to be most concerned about his troops getting back on defense, certainly respecting the blazing speed of Michigan State. This is not the home arena for the University of Kansas, though some have claimed it is. It's only 35 miles from Lawrence, but they have played here five times and are undefeated. Rebound by Kellogg, stripped by Darrell Johnson. Here comes Michigan State, but Hunter knocks it away. That'll be Spartan ball to inbound. Michigan State doing a good job of disguising their defense. They start off in what looks to be a three, but it's actually a man-to-man -man or matchup zone because they're following their men through. Judd Heathcote now in his 10th year at Michigan State. Scott Skiles goes right, guarded by Cedric Hunter. There's the first shot, Skiles shot, and it's good. Hard-nosed competitor. He loves the competition. I mentioned that he and Calvin Thompson are giving each other a few bumps, but he fires his team up. We are tied at six. Cedric Hunter. Then as you take a look, they're playing man. He's laying off of him, sagging in a little bit. There's Dryling. In and back out to Hunter. Takes it to the lane and pulls it up. Well, we talked about the lightning quick moves that he has. He displayed at that time. Here comes Skiles going all the way. Blocking foul called. Larry Brown thought his team was going to get the charge. Well, take a look to see if Manning has position. He's planted as Skiles goes. Manning, now, had he just maintained that square position, he took that left shoulder and moved it just a little bit, trying to gain an advantage, and that's what the official saw. Scott Skiles will go to the line where he's hitting 90%. We mentioned at the open he was controversial. To say he is controversial is to say the Philippine election might have been tainted. Arrested three times in the last year and a half, and he misses his first free throw. He had hit 17 of 18 in NCAA tournament competition. Just to complete the story on Skiles, arrested three times in the last year and a half, twice for driving while intoxicated, one for minor possession of drugs. He will serve a jail sentence at the conclusion of this season. And there are many who feel he should not be playing, but under the current NCAA Big Ten and Michigan State rules, he is eligible. That is a very controversial move that Judd Hico made to keep him on the team. And so the fans get on him quite a bit wherever he goes as a result of that, but he does turn that into a positive and try center from that and plays better. Danny Manning puts Kansas back on top. Vernon Carr with a good move. Jumper up. Goaltending. Clear case of it that time. The ball's on his downward flight. Again, the key here was that the ball was on his downward flight. Danny Manning trying to get into the game defensively, but the ball that reaches apex and clearly was on its way down. 2-3 zone defense displayed by Michigan State. We mentioned both were good shooting teams. They are Seven. Make it six of eight as Ron Kellogg hits from 22. And he can nail him from anywhere around the perimeter. Zokin Styles, but he misses that one. Rebound. Larry Pollock off the glass. Good. Good job of pounding the boards. That is going to be a big key. Coach Judd Heathcote said his team must hit the boards awfully hard in order to take away that size advantage of Kansas. Now Calvin Thompson back to Cedric Hunter. Underneath the dryling, they'll try and work it in here. Whoops. Goaltending. Above the rim in the cylinder, no foul. No goaltending. Call a pushing foul on Danny Manny. They are really calling him very close on him. As you take a look, Manny obviously showing good aggressiveness, number 25 in white, going to the boards awfully hard. I think that was just an excellent move. Should not have been a foul. Larry Brown obviously is irate. We're tied at 12. Michigan State and Kansas both off to a hot off the mark, tied at 12. At the conclusion of every CBS Sports NCAA tournament broadcast, we'll be selecting a Chevy Most Valuable Player from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each school to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Darrell Johnson inbounds for the Spartans of Michigan State, tied at 12 with 14.40 to go first half. Now Cedric Hunter against Scott Skiles. And again, keep in mind that Hunter wants to force Skiles to really work for those shots, hopefully low percentage. There's a steal by Danny Manning, takes it all the way, and misses the shot. Should be shooting a couple. Isn't it amazing to see a guy, 6'11", taking that ball like a Julius Irving. He gets out on lead to break. Look at the speed he possesses at 6'11". 
pulls up knowing that they're going to reach in and goes in for the layup. An extremely agile player. Well, as he spent his first two years in high school in North Carolina in Greensboro, his dad, Ed, is an assistant to Larry Brown. And Larry's quite candid. He hired uh, Ed when Danny Manning was uh, going to become a senior in college. And Danny transferred to Lawrence, Kansas. Larry says, no, I don't think we'd have him here if I hadn't hired his dad. But I think it was a package deal. And Ed Manning is my assistant. Danny Manning is playing for the team. You like an honest guy. Pulls no punches. Gets them both. Six points for Manning now. He's averaging just over 17 for the year. 14-12. Larry Pollock going to a bit of a roll now. And Skiles, as Danny Manning comes out and switches on him. Calvin Thompson, they've got him trapped in the corner. Skip pass, and Pollock tries to save it. Can't. Cedric Hunter, two on four. Let's see if Hunter pulls up. He does. Michigan State had trouble recognizing the trick defense that time by Kansas in the paid dividends and forced a turnover. Ron Kellogg. Two three Honey. zone on the part of Michigan State. They go in and we'll try and come back out if they can't get the shot. We'll try and look at the shot. That's a for Kansas now, James, because Dryling has been in a bit of a slump. He has been in a real slump. He's a big, strong, physical ball player, shows good agility here, and uses that 7-1 frame and bulk of his very nicely going to the hoop. Kansas needs a big game from the big fella. Dryling with a chance for a three-pointer. Hitting 70% for the line for the year, and so far he's been perfect in the tournament. Still the all-time leading scorer in Kansas high school annals. He started his college career at Wichita. Transferred and sat out. Now the first sub, Chris Piper, comes in, and Danny Manning will get a rest. The nice thing about this Kansas team is that they're such an unselfish bunch. All of the guys want to see Dryling do better, do well in this tournament. They're hoping for a good game from it. 16-12, Daryl Johnson, or Vernon Carr, gets it to Daryl Johnson. Good spin move, draws the foul, they will shoot a couple. Calvin Thompson really got caught that time, really bumping and swinging that arm down on the foul. Larry Brown said uh, yesterday in talking with us, yes, he was worried about Skiles, but he also had great respect for Daryl Johnson's shooting ability. Indeed, which is why you could perhaps see some type of triangle in two with those two guys being chased an awful lot to minimize their effectiveness. Well, cuts it to a three-point margin. Getting 68% in the tournament. Gets them both. 14 Kansas lead. 13-37 remaining first half. Vern Lundquist and James Brown live from Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri. Where we have a sellout crowd, most of whom are Kansas partisans. Again, MSU sticking with the 2-3 zone defense, showing a lot of respect for the inside height and bulk of Kansas. Hunter, number 22, junior point guard. Galvin Thompson, one of three seniors on the team underneath the drop. He stripped, foul. Vernon Carr got him on the wrist. Clear size and strength advantage on the inside with Dryling. Should not be able to stop him at all. And if, in fact, Kansas continues to display patience on the offensive end and work it down low, Michigan State really will have a lot of trouble with that half-court offense. Dryling really has improved in this year's senior season. Among other things, he's begun taking dance classes to try and improve his balance, coordination. Not a bad idea. The pro scouts are really taking a good, close look at him. Obviously, the guy's got the size. He's got the agility. And if he's got the heart to bounce back out of the slump, then it'll serve him well in their estimation. Gets one of two. Three-point Kansas lead with 13.08 to go first half. Scott Skiles has been kind of a, a silent factor here in the first half. Give a lot of credit to Cedric Hunter right now, who's making him work. Good trapping defense over the court on Skiles. Ron Kellogg helping out. Now comes back as Vernon Carr lays it up. Rebound, Chris Piper. Here comes Kansas on the run. They will run with Michigan State. Good job by Johnny on D. Galvin Thompson. Chris Piper, number 24. First sub of the game. Back to Hunter, now Piper. Will pass on the jump shot. They look for Dryling inside. Can't find it. Ron Kellogg, he's a great pure shooter. Larry Brown said he's the best pure shooter he's ever been associated with. That's the same because he's coached some good ones. Five point Kansas lead. That's a rarity. Barry Fordham with only his ninth 
shot, not his ninth point, his ninth shot in two games in eight minutes. Check the defense now for Michigan State. Again, the 2 3 zone defense, sagging in, trying to take away the inside game of Kansas. Calvin Thompson. Well, the 2 3 zone defense is doing his job, but Kansas perimeter got doing their job. Five point Kansas lead again. Vernon Carr into the corner for Ford at the second shot of the game. And another foul, this time on Hunter. That's the fifth team foul, shooting foul. And Ralph Walker has come into the lineup now. Here comes Danny Manning back into the lineup, and he'll replace Greg Dryling. Had a chance to sit on the bench, see exactly what was going on out there on the floor. Dryling, good job while he was in there. Excellent job. Ralph Walker, one of two subs who figure prominently for Michigan State. He's a senior out of Southfield, Michigan, gets the first of his two. He to the program as a 16-year-old freshman, and indeed, the coaching staff wishes that maybe he might have redshirted one year so they would have the full benefit of his development next year. I'll bet they do. Now Larry Pollock comes back in. Pollock number 35, Ralph Walker gets a rest. 21-18, 11.40 to go, first half. Kansas leading Michigan State. Winner of this game goes on to meet North Carolina State here Sunday afternoon. It'll be interesting to see if, in fact, the two point guards extend to stop the jump shooting of Calvin Thompson. Larry Pollock with a rebound for Michigan State. Skiles chases it down. And he can't. Piper. Push. No travel. A push on Daryl Johnson. Well, because Piper fell that time and hit the floor, he had the ball. Both pivot fit, feet, that is, technically moved. So the official had to either call a travel foul or a pushing travel violation or pushing foul. So the foul goes against Daryl Johnson. That's his first, fourth team foul on Michigan State. Might easier for the official to see than for me to say that one. 21-18, <laughs> Kansas with the lead. Excellent move. He really drew the contact to him that time. That easily could have been a foul. Eight points for Manning. Skiles misfires. He's got only four so far. Nice save by Danny Manning. Here come the Jayhawks with a chance for their biggest lead, which would be seven. Boy, Cedric Hunter is really doing his job. Archie Marshall is in the lineup now. He just tries to get it inside for Manning. Cedric Hunter has not allowed Scott Skiles to be a factor in the game up to this point, really taking his offense away. Giles has only taken four shots and hit two so far. There's the baseline jumper. Danny Manning is in double figures with 10. Darrell Johnson. Chris Piper with a rebound. Here come the Jayhawks. One shot only on the offense. Hunter gets it back, goes to Piper quickly. Marshall, junior college transfer in his first year here. Good tip for Kansas. Marshall off the glass. Nine point Kansas lead. Timeout, Michigan State. John Heathcote wants to talk it over, and the Jayhawk fans are roaring. We are live from Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm Burr Lundquist, along with James Brown. Michigan State trailing the University of Kansas 37-32 with 4.41 to go in the first half. Next Sunday, CBS Sports will present live coverage of the Women's NCAA Basketball Championship game at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Join Gary Bender and Mimi Griffin as a new women's champion is crowned in 1986. Kansas on top, 37-32. Frontline scoring so far. Kind of interesting. 28 to 16 for Kansas over Michigan State. Now with Daryl Johnson and Scott Skiles both on the bench, Judd Heathcote has 45 points per game sitting on the bench. He has a quintet on the court right now that on a per game average is hitting 35 points per game. And the way to offset the loss of the great individual scores is to do it in a more balanced fashion, Vern, and that comes by way of a fast break. Pollock will draw the foul. Larry Pollock, as a matter of fact, is the second leading scorer on the court right now with a 10.7 average. That is his second foul. There's Judd Heathcote. 
This is a team that was picked eighth in the Big Ten in preseason play. They started off with a 9-1 preseason mark before getting into conference play. Struggled a little early on as Greg Dryling comes back in and Chris Piper gets a lead. But then those two big wins against Michigan. They finished 12-6 and six and tied third in the Big Ten. And they are, as you all know, I'm sure the only Big Ten team remaining in competition. Meanwhile, Kansas remains the only team from Western Mississippi in competition. When do you realize that Michigan State is only down by five points? So even with the lower scoring squad on the floor, make it six now, they really have accomplished what they wanted to, and that's to maintain. I would think, James, if they can get to have thousand shots and benched and keep it in a single digit. Under ten, that's right. They're going to be just fine. Good pass underneath. Valentine. It's only 5-4 now, 38-34. Good job by Valentine off the bench. As I mentioned before, his game is principally inside. 6'6", six, six, about 230, 235. He's worked a lot in the offseason with the weightlifting program. He's big pressing 280 now, so he loves the inside action. There's Dryling inside. They collapse on him. Get short. The rebound. Kansas to inbound. Good fundamental moves on the part of Dryling. He just can't get that, that shot to fall. But part of his problem developmentally has been that he's not had that many big people to work against all year long. 3.45 to go first half. 38-34. Calvin Thompson back to Mark Turgeon. Update you on DePaul and Duke. Just into the second half and Duke leading by seven. Our margin is four here. Calvin Thompson. He'll hit that all day. There's a young man who was so disillusioned last year, he almost quit this basketball team. He and Larry Brown had some differences. Ironed them out. He's got, got 10 points in the game. One of four players on this Kansas team who has hit more than 1,000 points in his career. That's amazing. Mark Brown. Valentine. Intercepted by Turgeon. It's a two-on-two -two break. Up, poor pass. Turgeon tries to make a man. Larry Pollock. Brown with a good feed to Carr, and Archie Marshall draws the foul. Well, we mentioned just a few seconds ago about how with the lack of a great individual score out there on the part of Michigan State, the way you offset that, oh, one of the principal right. ways is to get that fast break going, and State is showing that very, very nicely. Substitution getting ready to come back in now. Ralph Walker rejoins the lineup for Michigan State, and Larry Pollock will get a rest. That's a case of senior for senior. Skiles and Johnson on the bench with three fouls each. Danny Manning on the bench. Also with three fouls for Kansas. Yes. So the three key players in this ballgame are all in foul trouble. There's Judd Heathcote talking to Larry Pollock. Much to both coaches' credit, though, they've got good second units out there on the floor working very well. Talk about good practice habits coming into play now. Neither team, James, is regarded as necessarily deep, though, are they? Not, not really at all. Good point, Burn. 40 to 35, 250 to go first half. Mark Turgeon, number 11. In the corner, the jumper from Marshall. He hits it. Mark Brown. Underneath the Valentine, off the iron, driving with the rebound. Galvin Thompson quickly to Cedric Hunter. Almost tried the alley-oop. Marshall was looking for it. Now Marshall has the ball. 42-35, back to a seven-point bulge for the Kansas Jayhawks. Underneath, Galvin Thompson. Good. Outside, inside, Thompson using that bulk very nicely. It's really amazing to see a guy his size and strength be able to connect that nicely from the outside and then take it on the inside as well. He's just one point shy of his per game season average. He's got 12 in this game. He's averaging 13 for game per year. Mark Brown hits. 44-37 under the two-minute mark. Freshman showing a lot of poise there at Brown. Pretty good player. Indeed he is. He's getting some experience under fire right now. Thompson again long range. Good rebound by Archie Marshall. Travel. Scott Skiles leads the cheers. Valentine is out of the lineup now. Vernon Carr. Give Mark Brown a lot of credit for helping force that turnover. Nice job when he went to Archie Marshall. Turnovers now. Michigan State with eight. Kansas with only three. And 
Kansas with six points off the turnovers. Michigan State with just two. That's the more important one. They've connected, converted on the turnovers. 44-37, 125 to go first half, live from Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri. 2-3 zone on the part of Kansas. Oops, Piper knocks it out of bounds. Well, that was a tough angle to make that pass from, too. Very tough angle. Brown signals he wants the zone defense now on the inbounds play. Should be a lot easier for State to get inside now because Kansas is not, they're lacking the big physical people on the inside. Hunter, no, it's Archie Marshall who drew the foul. That is his second. And Vernon Carr will go to the line. Again, one of the effectiveness of Kansas zone when they have the big guys in there is that visually it creates so many obstacles and it intimidates a guy to thinking that he can't get inside the zone. But now that's just been taken care of because Dryling is back in. He's such a big spacey man. Dryling back in and Billy Dyer, Calvin Thompson right there. I think he would though. Calvin Thompson is on the bench. What a performance they had last night down in Houston. Congratulations to them and Auburn for a fantastic regional final. Tomorrow here on CBS. I know Sonny Smith is probably watching, and his team played well. They, they did. Big fellows were working nicely. Oh, what a pass from Dryling, and the shot won't go. Good, unselfish play by Dryling. Cedric Hunter has been able to kind of conserve himself now because with Skiles on the bench, Hunter's not having to work as hard on both ends of the court. When Skiles is in there, his job was made a lot tougher. Skiles has been down since the seven-minute mark, just about. And we're under a one-minute mark now, 50 seconds to go. Watching Cedric Hunter shoot free throws has become an adventure this year. For a guard, he's got an amazingly low average. 57%. They don't fly any planes in this area as high as he shoots that ball. Substitution. Calvin Thompson coming back in as the Kansas crowd roars with delight as Hunter hits two. Thompson, leading scorer in the game with 12. If you join us late, Danny Manning, the All-American from Kansas, on the bench with three fouls. He's been there for about six minutes. So is Scott Skiles, the All-American from Michigan State. Daryl Johnson, the other guard from Michigan State. Both have three. 46-37, back to a nine-point lead. Pollock gets the ball from Vernon Carr. As much as we talk about Kansas' offensive potency, they have really done the job tonight, as well as all season defensively. Michigan State only with 37 points, and they're averaging 83 on the year. Nine on the shot clock. Pollock gets the bounce pass in the corner, and the shot won't fall. As a matter of fact, Kansas in the NCAA has held its two opponents to 46 and 43 points, respectively. That's the end of the first half with our score, the Kansas Jayhawks, 46, the Michigan State Spartans, 37. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Nomadic coach Larry Brown has been connected with three of the most storied college basketball programs at one time or another. First, he played for Dean Smith at North Carolina from 1959 through 63, and later served as an assistant coach for the Tar Heels starting in 1965. Fourteen years later, Brown spent two years guiding the program that John Wooden built at UCLA before taking over at Kansas for five years in the mid-1980s. Chris Myers has more on the well-traveled Brown in this vintage Sports Center report from 1989. Out a way to get back in the game. Don't walk it up, John. If you're gonna call a play, run it up. So we make sure everybody hold it, Frank. We gotta stop him first. Brown's troubles extend beyond the team's poor performance this season in the NBA's Midwest Division. Predictably, he was criticized heavily for taking the Spurs job last June. Largely because he stated allegiance to KU after rejecting the vacant UCLA job. I've decided to stay at the university. Yeah! Brown's reputation as that of a vagabond was resurrected immediately after his departure. If I had my druthers, I'd, I'd love to have stayed in one place and been able to build something. I'm really disappointed at that. I probably had my chance at Kansas and, and didn't take advantage of it. 
If Brown sounds regretful, it may be because he hurts deeply over the three-year probation imposed against Kansas by the NCAA last November. I think it did damage, you know, my reputation because I go places now and people bring up the point that you cheated and, you know, basically what I did is I gave a kid a plane ticket home and um, I'd, I'd do it again. Brown may be coaching in San Antonio, but it's apparent that his heart is still in Lawrence, Kansas. It's been a real uncomfortable situation for me to see that these kids that meant so much to our program weren't able to defend their title is, is probably the most disappointing thing that I've gone through this whole year. Despite the disappointment, Brown has David Robinson and a host of young talent to work with down the road. He's hoping that adversity can lead to success in San Antonio, just as it did at Kansas a year ago. In San Antonio, Chris Myers, ESPN. In addition to coaching Kansas to the 1988 NCAA title, Larry Brown has led six different franchises to the NBA playoffs. Coming up, we'll take a closer look at Jayhawk star Danny Manning. But when we return, it's back to Kansas and Michigan State in the 1986 NCAA tournament right here on ESPN Classic. Better than 18,000 crammed into Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri. First half scoring for both teams. Skiles with eight still leads the team, but you can see that uh, Judd Heathcote had to go to his bench. Skiles and Daryl Johnson both set out the last six and a half minutes of the first half. Johnson and Pollock with six each. Calvin Thompson has 12 points. Danny Manning 10 to lead all Kansas scorers. Scott Skiles is in the starting lineup playing with three fouls. He played 40 minutes in each of the two previous NCAA tournament games. The wins over Washington and Georgetown and set out the final 651 of the first half. He and Darrell Johnson both in with three fouls as the backcourt tandem. We'll see what adjustments MSU makes to try to get into their transition game because with 37 points only having scored in the first half, obviously prevented from their transition game. Danny Manning loses control. Larry Pollock grabs the air ball. And Hunter harassing Skiles who gets the ball. Backhand pass to Vernon Carr. Daryl Johnson. Rebound Pollock. Second chance point, and Johnson can't get it to fall. Manning with a rebound. Dribbles like he's 5'11. Skiles trying to draw the charge and a no call. Might be important for Manning just to try to come down the court two, three, four times, get into the flow of the game. I think he's pressing himself a little too much to try and display his wares, Vern. The one criticism of Danny Manning in his sophomore season is a lack of aggressiveness. He has been very deferential to his teammates. Talked with that about Larry, with Larry Brown about that yesterday. He said, well, maybe he wasn't aggressive in November, but this is after all his March. There's Pollock. Gets the first two of the second half, 46-39. And Greg Drowling looks to really be lumbering up the court as if he's having some problems, getting some spring and zipping those legs. And the quick leapers of Michigan State are out jumping him. Cedric Hunter, number 22. Thompson with 12 points, the leading scorer in the ball game, has the ball top of the key. They look underneath the Dryling, but they're collapsing on him. Now Dryling has it, lays it up and in. Good pass from Ron Kellogg, number 44. Led him nicely. 48-39 with 18-15 to go, first half. Darrell Johnson back to Scott Skiles, and look at Hunter, right in his face. Back to Fordham, takes his third shot of the game and gets his second basket. He's only averaging two and a half points per game, and he has started 24 games this year. 48-41, 17-50 remaining in the ball game. Left-handed shot by Kellogg. We watched him shoot what would be three-pointers in the NBA yesterday. He hit six in a row. That's not quite in Larry Bird's league, but it ain't a bad average. Fordham with his fourth shot in the game. Somebody wake up. My goodness. It's amazing what tournament time will do to some ball players. Bring out the best. Barry Fordham now has six points. And you said he's only nine times. That's right. Coming into the game in the first two games. Unbelievable. Manning quickly back to Thompson. Hunter loops it over to Kellogg. He's strong. Darrell Johnson with a rebound for Michigan State. It's a three-on-three -three break. Good pass. Vernon Carr with two more. 
very obvious that the Spartans have just made their minds up. Every time they get the ball, they're going to push it up the court. That's the way for them to get back in the ball game. It's down to a five-point margin. It was nine at the half. Galvin Thompson back to Cedric Hunter. Manning comes out to a high post. They look underneath for Dryling. Settle instead for Thompson along the baseline. Into the zone. Foul called on Daryl Johnson. That's his fourth. Let's see if Judd Heathcote goes to his bench. No move yet. Yep, there it comes. Chris Piper comes in for the Kansas Jayhawks. And I think you were right. Dryling's going to sit down. He looked like he was winded. Moving very, very slow. Besides, he's not really and has not been asserting himself out there as big and strong as he is. You know, I might even take a foul just to see him go aggressively at the boards and maybe even bowl someone over. Ralph Walker comes in. Whoops, Kansas lost it. And here comes Michigan State. Scott Skiles pulls up, takes the off-balance jumper. He will go to the free throw line. Well, that guy right there can certainly do an awful lot to get his team back into the game. And that's Scott Skiles. Good pump fake, and they called the knee foul. <laughs> and they got him with the knee. Skiles at the line. Eight points so far in the game. Three turnovers, or rather three uh, fouls early in the game. Limited his contributions tonight. A few uh, players around the country, uh, I've had this remark about only a few. Winston Bennett's one. But finesse is definitely not Scott Scowles' is calling car. He likes to mix it up underneath. And yeah. only 6 and 1. Yep. He's in double figures now with 10 points. Now. Almost a 2 on 2. Danny Manning trying to work free. Ron Kellogg has it now. Galvin Thompson. Good strong rebounding effort by Michigan State here in the second half. There's the ball goes loose, and let's see. White will control. It'll be Kansas. Again, it's apparent that Michigan State was of the mind that Kansas would not continue to connect that well from the outside. They're staying with the 2-3 zone defense, giving up the outside shot, and trying to protect the inside. Kansas only 40% in this half after starting off with 12 of 16 in the first half. There's Manning. That's a cure for the Blues. So talented. to do it inside or out. Skiles will go to the next line. Kellogg draws the foul. Now you notice how he's just pushing the ball up the court. He does not possess blazing speed, but he makes his mind up that he's going to take the ball into where the action is, and he gets a drawing or reaching foul in the process. And watch the reaction. He'll pump air. Skiles back at the line. He's 4 of 5 in the game. This is Archie Marshall coming into the Jayhawks, number 23, and he replaces Chris Piper. Giles, Barry Fordham, Larry Pollock, Daryl Johnson is back in, playing with four fouls, and Vernon Clark for Michigan State. Giles with the second of two. Twelve points. Half of which have come at the free throw line for Scott Skiles. He's only three field goals. I talked to the top about his tenacious style. Scott Skiles, that is, being contagious. And his teammates are now pumped up. You can see in the zone. And Kansas just appears a little lethargic in this half, James. Yes, they do. They're moving just a little slower, Vern. Archie Marshall. Rebound Manning. He'll have a chance for a three-point play. And I mentioned in the first half with Manning out of there, that gave Michigan State the advantage on a defensive end because Manning is so excellent on the offensive end. And here's why at 6'11", good movement to the basket. The ball is kept alive, and here's that wingspan serving him well. Can't stop him in that tight. Manning with 14 now. Larry Pollock gets the foul. That's his third.
55 49, 15 minutes. Skiles, Johnson, Pollock. I think I said Johnson had his fourth foul. Bad shot by Skiles. 55 49. Doesn't need to force him. That one was taken under too much pressure. Cedric Hunter trying to solve his zone defense. Kellogg might solve it. Unbelievable. This guy has not practiced. I talked about his conditioning perhaps being suspect. Not the case so far. Second chance for Vernon Carr. Now comes the transition game. Skiles goes out to do the defensive job and then gets the rebound. Timeout called by Michigan State. Judd Heathcote has his troops gathered around. It's an eight-point lead. We are live at Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri for this Midwest Regional semifinal encounter between the Kansas Jayhawks and Michigan State Spartans. I'm Vern Lundquist along with James Brown. Kansas leading 57-49 after the Spartans had cut that lead to three. 14-17 remaining in the ball game and Michigan State Scott Skiles issuing instructions to his teammates as he is wont to do. And they will follow. <laughs> they do listen. That's right. 57-49, 14-10 to go in the ball game. Daryl Johnson. And Michigan State has now become the first team in NCAA tournament competition to score over 50 against Kansas this year. As neither Temple nor North Carolina AMT got above the 50 mark. Off balance shot is short, followed by Marshall is no good. Pollock with a rebound. Here comes Scott Skiles. They can make it down to a four-point deficit. Fordham. He's become a gunner. Excellent fast break. It was a fast break under control. The trailer came into the scene. He got the shot. Fordham averaging 2.4 points per game. Has eight tonight, six in his half. Update you on the Duke DePaul score from East Rutherford, New Jersey. Duke now leading by 10. Underneath to Danny Manning in the face of Barry Fordham. Good rebounding position by Vernon Carr, but Archie Marshall, and then he turns and knocks out Skiles down. That's probably what Skiles needed to get riled up now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, put him on the seat of his pants. 59-53. To the baseline. Hunter quickly out to harass Scott Skiles. Foul underneath on Ron Kellogg. That's four on Kellogg. Good pass on the inside by Skiles. Greg Dryling getting ready to Watch uh, the end of that last rebound as Skiles gets knocked down. Vern, he almost took some paint off the floor, too, to take a look at Skiles. I mean, he got clobbered, but good, but he loves it. <laughs> I think he does. Ah, nice follow by Vernon Carr, number 23. It's a four-point margin, 59, 55, 12, 40 to go. Archie Marshall looks to have lost his legs just a little bit, not quite as active on a defensive end. At no point in the game has Kansas been able to get into double digits with the lead. The largest lead has been nine that they have led throughout. 2-3 zone defense taking away the inside action, giving up the outside shot. Thompson skip pass. Archie Marshall underneath the dryling. Oh, good, good play by Daryl Johnson. Skiles pulls up, lets it go. That's what MSU needs to do, continue to break. And what's working well for them is even on the initial break, they stay with the break, and at a professional level, they call, they wait for the secondary break to develop. That means a trail man coming down. What's good for the Spartans is good for the Jayhawks. Kansas calls time. We're back at Kemper Arena, where Michigan State has become the hot shooting team in the second half, and they pulled it within two. And the reason for that hot shooting burn is because of the fast break. If you take a look at Daryl Johnson bringing the ball up the court, kicks it over to Scott Skiles. The fast break is working well. That's like a layup for him. That's why they're back in this ball game. It's only a two-point game. Scott Skiles now with 14 points. He had eight at the half and sat out the first, uh, the final rather, 651 of the first half. Michigan State eight of 12 in this half. Kansas only six of 14. And the Jayhawks lead has reduced to two. Last time we were tied was at 12. 
Underneath the dry lane. Misses the stuff. His legs. His legs are not there, Vern. He does not have the spring. Now, Drowley ought to be taking advantage of Michigan State on the inside. There's no one as big and strong as he is in the middle. He can't dominate. Kansas will inbound. There's seven foot one inch Greg Dryling. 59-57 with 11.44 to go. Archie Marshall. They look for Dryling again. Again, it won't fall. The tip by Archie Marshall is up and in. Well, Marshall got his legs together that time. Dryling just really needs to take his time and go up for that shot. There's not going to be anyone to block it, and if so, they've got to climb that big body of his to do so. Greg Dryling is now two of nine in the game. Second chance points. You saw the graphic there. Back to a four-point lead. Well, we mentioned that Dryling has been in a horrid slump here in the last month or so. Earl Johnson lets it go short. Manning is out front for the rebound by Larry Pollock. That might be a hell ball it is, and it's Michigan State's ball. Excellent hustle by Larry Pollock, who just made up his mind. He was determined to get that good inside position on Manning and to pay dividends. Take a look at Larry Pollock hustling all the way. He wants this one single elimination. You know you've got to get on the floor and go for the ball. Well, he's a blue-collar forward, and that time it paid off as his labors resulted in a hell ball, and Scott Skiles will inbound after they get the perspiration cleaned up. There is the possession arrow. They will change that as soon as the ball is inbounded and uh, switch it to uh, read Kansas' direction. Judd Heathcote now in his 10th season. And Lost to Kansas, excuse me, in the 78 NCAA tournament, or Kentucky, rather. And Kentucky went on to win, and they came back in 79 with Magic and Greg Kelser and won it all. The coach next to him on his left, Herb Williams, is one of the main reasons why this Spartan team is fast-breaking more. Skiles passes on the shot, goes to Fordham, and Fordham will go to the line. Danny Manning, that's four. The fans will scream. It doesn't look pretty. But nine times out of ten, when you have the ball in heavy traffic, if you take it up, the officials are one to call the foul on the opposition. That's why you tell young guys to go straight up with the ball in heavy traffic like that. Larry Brown indicating by his gestures, he said Manning went straight up. Now Manning will go straight to the bench with four fouls. He leaves with 15 points, and Fordham has been an unexpected offensive force in this ballgame. Known primarily for his rebounding and defense. Talk about pleasant surprises. This is the second. Michigan State with a rebound. And a chance to pull within one. From the corner. It's a one-point margin. Red Arback used to say it. Don't tell me an awful lot about statistics. When a guy gets into the ball game and my team gets ahead if they're behind or they pull even, that's what means most to me. And Scott Skiles has come back into the game the second half. Michigan State is now within one. Archie Marshall. Rebound Michigan State. Darrell Johnson. They can take the lead for the first time since the opening moments of the game. Fordham. Barry Fordham in double figures. And look who helped to get him fired up. Scott Skiles. Needs help. They've called timeout. We're back at Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri, where Michigan State has gone on top over Kansas 62-61 with 9.59 to go. We want to welcome those of you who have been watching Duke versus DePaul. The Michigan State Spartans with the unexpected surge led by Barry Fordham, a non-scoring center, have come from a nine-point halftime deficit and grabbed the lead over a Kansas Jayhawk team that has Danny Manning on the bench with four fouls. I'm Vern Lundquist along with James Brown, and this is Kansas with the ball. Cedric Hunter, number 22. They look inside for Greg Dryling, who is two of nine in the game, and that collapsing zone has given him problems. Thompson hits, and Kansas back on top. They're going to need his outside scoring to try to bring that 2-3 zone out to open up the inside for Dryling. 
Scott Skiles with 14 points so far in the game. Sat out the final 651 of the first half with his third foul. Larry Pollock puts Michigan State back on top. Skiles is such a smart ball player. When he gets two defenders on him, he definitely is unselfish enough to kick the ball to, the, to his teammates, that is. More importantly, they're scoring. Thompson had 12 in the first half, nothing in this half. Again, they look underneath for Dryling. The strength advantage ordinarily would go to Kansas, but Barry Fordham has hit a career high of 11 points in this game. That uh, ball will be inbounded by the Kansas Jayhawks. 8.54 remaining. There is a worried Larry Brown. He said yesterday, James, I'm scared to death. Well, he, he definitely respects the transition game of Michigan State, and they've got their fast break tempo going very nicely right now. Heathcote certainly has got to be pleased with the kind of contagious effect that he talked about Scott Scowls has on the rest of his teammates. Underneath to Chris Piper, who has come in in place of Danny Monty. That's a good pass from Dryland. And the shot will not fall. Kansas, having started out this game with 75% of its field goals, has suddenly gone ice cold in this half. Oftentimes, that's the toughest shot to make. And the mistake that Piper made was that he didn't know if he was going to bank it off the glass or shoot it straight on. Therefore, it was in between. Fourth foul on Larry Pollock. Vernon Carr goes to the bench. Pollock stays in. And uh, Ralph Walker is also into the lineup. And Fordham has been working overtime. Your guy is really playing a whale of a game, not only offensively, he's doing a job against the 7-1 Dryley. We're talking about Barry Fordham, number 40, who is defending right there. Here comes Skiles with the pass to Johnson. That is the largest Michigan State lead of the game. It's up to three. And with each great play, Skiles is pumping his fist in the air, pumping his teammates up in effect. Skiles has taken a different role tonight because he's been hampered by the tenacious defense. And here comes Michigan State as Kansas continues to live in the refrigerator. Kansas has no quick leapers out there. Danny Manning's being on the bench certainly has hurt them in that respect. Danny Manning's going to go up off of Scott Skiles' foot. He argues the call. Looked as if it did go off of Scow. Take a look on the inside here. He starts his move, but Scow's had a good argument. That ball did go off of the leg of the big fellow, Greg Dryler. And one official has overruled another one, so Scow's won the argument. Pollock with four, Manning and Kellogg with four each. So we do have foul problems for both ball clubs, and Skiles has played the entirety of the second half with three, he and Darrell Johnson. And with Kansas in the man command, you ought to take the ball right to Fordham, who Manning is guarding to try to get him out of there with that fifth foul. Well, James, you said with about three minutes to go in the first half, if Michigan State could stay with a single-digit deficit, they'd be in the ballgame. They trailed by nine at the half, and here they are with a three-point lead. Here's Skiles. And they have been getting beaten on the boards, but Kansas gets this one. 63. You mentioned it before about how lethargic Kansas is looking. Their legs look as if they left them slightly, Vern. Danny Manning playing with four fouls, but he's hoping to give them some offensive firepower underneath. They were not getting from Dryling. He's playing the low post now. Ron Kellogg also playing with four. As Larry Brown said, this is no time to rest the troops. And Manning certainly will command a lot of attention on the middle there because he can do it inside or out. Danny Manning. Good drive. Got a foul? Yes. No goaltending call. Ball was on the way up. They call the foul, but you really have to like the kind of aggressive hustle that Barry Fordham is showing on the back. Take a look on the defensive end. He goes out high to get Danny Manning. Now he hustles back in the middle of that zone, number 40 in green, and he comes over to make the block of Hunter. Just talk about great hustle all the way around. Cedric Hunter is a poor free throw shooter, under 60%. It's unusual for a guard, but he really has just terrible problems at the line. He's got a little too much arc on that ball. He really needs to take a considerable amount of arc off of that shot there. Much better. And guides that one in. 66-64. Michigan State with the lead. They fell behind by as many as nine when Skiles and Darrell Johnson set out the final six and a half minutes with three fouls each. Danny Manning was also out during that same time frame. And then
then when Kansas went cold to open the second half, unexpectedly, Barry Fordham, number 40, got his total up to 11 points, and there's not a foul called on Vernon Carr. Good defensive position, nice play, nice play on the part of Archie Marshall. Take a look, number 23 in white is going to get right there to take the charge. A nice position, and you are allowed the rule, the principle of verticality, verticality that has came into play. He's allowed that plane up and down. Only the second foul on Vernon Carr. Jayhawks with a chance to tie. Playing before 18,000 plus, only 35 miles from their home in Lawrence, Kansas, here in Kansas City, Missouri. A 2-3 zone defense is getting stronger. Skip pass to Kellogg. Good move to the baseline. He can light it up. That foot is not bothering him in the least. Playing with a sprained metatarsal arch. Skiles to Darrell Johnson. Larry Pollock getting ready to come back in with four fouls for Michigan State. 6.05 to go. Tenacious man-to-man -man defense. Good pass for them. He's got 13 points. His career high prior to the night was eight. And Barry Fordham, the junior from Buffalo, New York, at 6'8", now has 13 points. He's really making the statement that Judd Heathcote made about him stand absolutely true. He said he's much better than his statistics. Ron Gillon. Skiles with the rebound. Three on one break. Carr. <laughs> well, you're talking about Carr paying the price. You gotta like the fact Skiles with the nice look away pass. Carr takes it right to the basket and he does pay the price. Boy, look at Cedric Hunter. Talk about getting up. He's only 5'10. Hunter now with three fouls and Vernon Carr at the free throw line. You've got to love a hard-nosed kid like Scott Skiles. He really pumps everybody up, talks to everyone. Now, those of you who joined us around the country, we talked about his uh, off-the-court problems in the first half. Those of Scott Skiles as Vernon Carr gets ready to shoot. Skiles will serve a jail sentence at the end of this basketball season because he's been convicted twice of driving while intoxicated, one of a drug possession charge, and violated his probation. And he's, uh, as we said, a very controversial character. There are many who feel he should not be playing NCAA basketball, but... Under the rules that exist in the Big Ten, the NCAA, and Michigan State, he is up. 5.28 to go, 69-66. Suddenly cold Kansas team underneath the Danny Manning. Off-balance shot, rebound Kellogg, pumps twice, tries to get the foul, the tip is good. Marshall with 12 points. Michigan State lead. Looks like Kansas may have their second win. Guys look a lot more aggressive on that play. Skiles with 14 points so far in the game. Vernon Carr, good move. I'd say that was rather mean. A three-point Spartan lead under the five-minute mark. Larry Brown wants to talk it over again. This has been a gutty comeback by Michigan State, and they lead by three. Michigan State was the best shooting team in the Big Ten this year, and they've given ample evidence of why tonight. 14 of 20 for 70%. Timeouts remaining. Michigan State 2, Kansas 1. We departed in 1979 with an NCAA title. Michigan State 70% in this half. Danny Manning has an answer. 17 points for Manning in a one-point margin again. 4.25 to go in the game. If it comes down to a free-throw shooting contest, Michigan State is an excellent free-throw shooting team, hitting 80%. They are 17 of 22 so far tonight. Smart move on the part of Scowls. He pulled the ball out to see what kind of defense they were in. Well, when you throw up shots like that from that range, it makes no difference what kind of defense you're in. Scott Skiles had a game against Wisconsin earlier this year when he went 18 of 21. And 12 of those shots were from better than 18 feet. There's a tip by Thompson. 73-72, 3.50 to go in the game. Thompson has definitely gotten his second win. He's throwing it inside and out. Vernon 
far to Skiles. They'll try and work on Manning underneath and get him his fourth foul. Barry Fordham is under there guarded by Danny Manning. Again, looking for the seams in his own defense. Needs some men flashing in the middle. That surprise you at all that Barry Brown has gone to that zone? Not at all. Not at all. Again, Danny Manning has four fouls. He's got to do a little something to protect him as well. Defensive foul. That's four on Daryl Johnson. The junior out of Flint, Michigan. And it brings Judd Heathcote up out of his chair. Johnson, the second leading scorer for Michigan State, has 10 points tonight, but he, like Skiles, set out the final six and a half of the first half. And Kansas with a chance to regain the lead. Kellogg, one of the best shooters in the country, skip pass. Now Hunter, he's the assist man. Archie Marshall driving has been on the bench for about six minutes. There's Kellogg, no. Vernon Carr with a rebound, Thompson with a foul. That's two on Calvin Thompson. He's Goat and Larry Brown trying to match tactics. Foul trouble. Pollock and Johnson with four for Michigan State. Manning and Kellogg with four for Kansas. Styles has played the entire second half with three. He'll take it from there. Another strong blue collar rebound. That's one of the problems with the zone defense. You have a little difficulty picking out a man to block out. Pollock has been aggressive on the offensive boards all evening. Underneath the Danny Manning almost loses it, gets the off-balance ball. And again, a rebound for Vernon Carr. They're beating Kansas on the board. Skiles. Carr. He'll shoot two, blocking foul. The thing that I like about that play is you take a look at Scott Skiles pumping his arms in the air. Vernon Carr was the one who grabbed the defensive rebound, really worked his rear end off to get out on the break, and Scott Skiles rewarded him with a nice pass. Carr was the one who got on the defensive end. Why not make him a reward? Good play. And that was the fifth foul for the Big 8 Player of the Year and the second-team All-American, Danny Manning. He fouls out with 2.21 to go and leaves with 17 points and four rebounds. That will hurt. Greg Dryling, who has been an ineffective offensive force tonight, takes his place. That will hurt. Dryling is nowhere near as quick a leaper as Danny Manning is. Vernon Carr on line with a three-point lead, 2.21 to go in the game. And as soon as we say that Michigan State will have an edge at the free throw line, Carr misses. They're 17 and 23 tonight. They've hit 80 percent as a team for the year. A four-point margin, 221 remaining. Now with Manning out of the game, that ought to favor the Spartans. The clock is operating right now. Dryling tips it up. Kellogg gets it off the glass and in. The clock is not running. It's been stuck on 220. Now finally it starts again. And Judd Heathcote is going to raise some men. The clock, there must have been 35 seconds that ran off. The clock was not running. Skiles, 76-74. It sat on the 220 mark. Uh, maybe 30 is too much. But and Judd Heathcote, well aware that he is still ranting and raving along the sideline. And as well he should. Whistle. Foul. Ron Kellogg has fouled out. He's a senior at Kansas. Now, Judd Heathcote is calling the official over. He wants to get some satisfaction as far as the clock was concerned. Again, you take a look at Scott Scowls working here. We're going to try to pick up the foul. Awfully light touch foul if they call that one on Kellogg. Very light. Well, we've got two arguments going on now. Larry Brown talking with Bobby Dibler about the foul call. And meanwhile, Heathcote is trying to get the clock problem corrected. Technical. Brown is mad about the 
foul. Heathcote is wildly upset that the clock didn't run for, I'm going to guess, 15 seconds. And Scott Skiles, who's hitting 91% for the year, misses his second free throw tonight. Larry Brown may not have gotten that technical had not the program he had in his hand when he swung it, hit the official on the chest. Now Skiles will shoot the regular free throw. Back to a three-point edge. It's a four-point Michigan State lead, 78-74. Finale of this game clouded in controversy as that clock was sitting at 2.20 for a good 15 seconds. Minimum 15 seconds. And then the controversial foul call as Ron Kellogg joined Danny Manning on the bench. Clock shows 1.45 to go. Michigan State has two timeouts left. Kansas with one. And a fresh 45 in the shot clock. They'll work as much of it as they can. Spread it out. 78-74. directing traffic and in tough situations close situations like this you can't ask for a better leader than Styles. he was yelling at larry pop now he yells across and they'll start the play with 15 left on the shot clock 78 74 burning car back to Styles. Styles with 18 points tonight well below his average but hampered by fouls from the corner barry Fordham. 15 points on a 7 of 9 shooting performance for the 6'8 junior from Buffalo, New York. Cedric Hunter counters. 80-76 to go. This Michigan State team knocked off Washington 72-70. They defeated Georgetown after finishing third in the Big Ten. They are playing the second ranked team in the country. And they lead by four with 37 seconds to go. Well, this is a good ball handling team out there for Michigan State. 20 seconds to go. And the foul call to the baseline with 27 seconds left. Vern, the key is to go back to the first half when Scott Skiles left the game with three fouls, sat on the bench for seven minutes. Kansas could not capitalize. Michigan State only went down by an extra point, and they were more than able to make that up. 27 seconds remaining. Mark Turgeon has come in. Scott Skiles. Ampered with three fouls. He's been important tonight, but how can you only have Barry Fordham with seven of nine, a man who is averaging 2.4 points per game. And Absolutely he, can't. And he picks this game with Skiles in foul trouble. They hit seven of nine from the field. And a career high of 15 points. His previous career high was eight. The key burn is that they were not down by a big margin also to make that happen. There's the follow that goes. Timeout is called. It's still up for grabs with 20 seconds to go. There are officially 20 seconds left in this game. Had the clock not stayed still at the 2.20 for at least 15 seconds, that clock almost would have wound down. But it was never corrected, and Kansas is now out of its timeout. That will be the subject of a lot of conversation, because I don't know whether it was a mechanical malfunction or an oversight, but Judd Heathcote is going to have some words to say about that. The clock did not start at 2.20 for a good 15 seconds. And now officially, 20 seconds left. Here are the ones you don't want to f Skiles and Pollock leading the list. They'll probably go after Vernon Carr, but even he is hitting 70%. No, no, no. Oh, Michigan State call timeout right before the five seconds expire. Skiles quickly looked over at Bobby Dibler and screamed, timeout. Awfully close. It was really close. So now what, Mr. Brown? There's no choice that Kansas has but to foul as quickly as possible with 20 seconds left. 
they've got to get to Carr as quickly as possible. Carr is having a good game. And even he, as you mentioned before, shooting 69%, he's having a good game. I believe that emotionally they're playing extremely well, preferably if they could come up with the steal and avoid fouling altogether. It would work a lot better for them. Michigan State had a surge in the second half when Kansas went ice cold, hitting 38% coming out of the gates. Kansas led by nine at the half. And James Brown pointed out with about two minutes to go in the first half that if Michigan State could go to the halftime locker room trailing by no more than nine, they were still in the game. And boy, they proved you right. Which is why also the effort that Barry Fordham has put in while it has absolutely been sensational, and he definitely is a key man, the key man for Michigan State in the second half. They did not have that big a deficit to make up as they should have with Danny Manning on the bench in the first half. If you want to talk about an unlikely hero in a Midwestern Regional Championship game, look no farther than Barry Fordham, junior out of Buffalo, New York. His career high, eight points, but he is seven of nine tonight from the field, and he's done a terrific job defensively on Greg Dryland. Boy, the words of Coach Larry Brown certainly ring true now. He says, while we plan to do the job on Styles and Johnson, we cannot afford to let anyone else on the team have a big game, and that's exactly what's happening with Porter. You saw the possession arrow showing Kansas way. Skiles inbound, gets it back to Brown, one and one. The clock is still running now. It's down to 13. They're really having some problems with that clock. It's going to be 19. 19 seconds. 19. Okay, it's 19. It'll go back to 19 seconds. Well, they do the last part. You need to Judd Heathcote is going to get into this argument, and his argument will be it's probably now where it should be. He wants to let the clock run. <laughs> You talk about a coach not losing the feel of the game and having to stay on top of a number of elements. Judd Heathcote certainly showed that he was a good bench coach and staying on top of everything. When he saw that clock, he was right on top of it. They have reset the clock at 19 seconds. And Mark Brown, the freshman, is at the line. He's hitting 51, uh, 87 percent of his free throws for the year. 13 of 15 for the season. And 81 percent in the final four minutes. Freshman from Hastings, Michigan. And Kansas with a chance to tie. Calvin Thompson. Welcome to those of you watching Duke DePaul, final shot of the game. We're going to overtime. Archie Marshall's tip. Tied it up at 80. But let's not forget the case of the missing 15 seconds. Always keep that in perspective when remembering what happened in this game with 2.20 remaining in the game. The clock did not start for, we're going to guess, 15 seconds. And Kansas has tied up James Brown 80-80. The old expression that it's not over until it's over certainly rang true. you got to really like the fact that the Kansas ball players continue to push it towards the end. The quick leaping ability of Archie Marshall. I talked before about his legs, I thought, having left him early in the game. But at the most important part of the game, it did not. As you take a look at Archie Marshall, number 23, he's going to hit the boards hard. Nobody blocked him out. And he goes up for the rebound. Nice control. Talk about those practice habits coming into play, and then they put two men on Scott Skiles. Skiles hit the last shot, as we all knew he would. Gets it across the timeline with three seconds remaining. And then put it up just off the glass. And as a result, we are tied at 80. And we're going into overtime. 
Brown's team in overtime lost once to Memphis State earlier in the season. The Michigan State loss was to Iowa State, a team that lost here earlier tonight to North Carolina State. Danny Manning, Ron Kellogg, both on the bench having fouled out. Cedric Hunter controls for Kansas. Who takes over the leadership role for Kansas because their leader is on the bench in Danny Manning. Michigan State still has theirs out there in Scott Skiles. Skiles with 18 points, high for his team in the game. Has played the entire second half with three fouls. Dryling ends the drought. He was two of nine until he canned that basket. He's now hitting 30%. Kansas takes an early lead. This would be an excellent time for him to put aside the poor play in regulation time and come through in overtime. Foul trouble, Pollock and Johnson with four. Manning and Kellogg are out. Skiles evens it up. Well, the expression is a prime time player, and Skiles is certainly it. Cedric Hunter comes across, glances at Larry Brown on the bench. Is what do you want, coach? That 2-3 zone defense of the Spartans cannot allow Dryling to get the ball in the paint. They've got to force him out high or front him and get some help on the lob. From the top of the key. Long rebound taken by Larry Pollock, who's been a rebounding force tonight. Skiles lays it off to Pollock, off the glass. Good play, good play. Fans want to walk? Absolutely not. Larry Pollock with 14 points, and Michigan State back on top. 3.40 remaining in overtime. Pollock has really done his job nicely, an unsung hero who's really hit the boards hard tonight. Skiles went for the steal. 11 rebounds for Larry Pollock tonight. And that's six over his average. As a man who improved his field goal percentage dramatically in Big 8 play, shot over 70%. Set a big eight record, and it's tied at 84 again, 3.15 remaining. A sellout crowd at Kemper Arena. Skiles. Dryling with a rebound. Kansas with a chance to go back on top. Cedric Hunter looks in the zone. Archie Marshall, the man who tied it up with seven seconds to go. Got to keep Dryling out of the middle. Look underneath for Chris Piper. Hunter looks for Dryling, settles instead for Archie Marshall, a junior college transfer who played at Seminole Junior College in Oklahoma last year. 14 seconds left in the 42nd clock. The fresh 45. Thompson with a chance for a three-point play. Maybe hurt. points for Calvin Thompson now James Thompson does a nice job as he goes up for the rebound here sticks with it and at 6'6 220 he uses that ball very nicely as he goes up and he comes down on that knee in an awkward position looks like it locked a little bit on him and he's trying to run it off yeah those of you who have not been with us throughout the game a quick recap Kansas was up by nine at the half. Skiles was out with foul trouble with three. Michigan State, led by Barry Fordham, made a run and took the lead at 63-62. They held the lead for most of that point on. They had a chance to ice it with 20 seconds remaining in regulation play with Mark Brown at the line, the freshman. But he missed the front end of the one and one. The rebound, Archie Marshall put it in. You know, Thompson wears a special insert in his shoe anyway. One of his legs is an inch and five eighths inches longer than the other. It's a birth defect, so uh, that could very well have contributed to the problem as well. 87-84 with 2.20 to go. And there was also, we cannot forget, the controversy of a clock that stayed at the 2.20 mark for a good 15 seconds in regulation time. It never did run. Underneath, Daryl Johnson. What a feed, Larry Pollock. Excellent pass. Excellent pass. Good recognition. The middle man on his own came up to cover him, and a good pass. Kansas playing with its two leading scorers, Danny Manning and Ron Kellogg on the bench. Barry Fordham is really winded on the inside. You can see it. He's huffing and puffing. And Vernon Carr's got a big task whenever Dryling is on his side. Archie Marshall. Calvin Thompson. It's it again. Points for Calvin Thompson, four in overtime. We're talking about a heroic effort. He is really lumbering in pain. 
Rebound Pollock is 12th of the game. Shot driving with the Carroll. 120 to go in a three-point Kansas lead. Timeout. Kansas has a three-point lead and the ball. Kansas leading 89-86 in overtime. We were tied at 80. We have 118 remaining for Lundquist and James Brown. Here at Kemper Arena in Kansas City, the Jayhawks are out of timeout. Michigan State still has two left. Burn, it's really going to be a crying shame that a game as well played as it has been between these two teams. The young men giving their all and it has to be marred somewhat by what we think perhaps was a malfunction on the clock's part. Well, there seems to be some uh, thought now that even though the clock didn't start when it was at 2.20, it did jump down to the proper time. We'll try and check that. Here are those who are the four free throw shooters for Kansas, and they'll go right at Cedric Hunter or Chris Piper, both hitting under 60%. You don't want Thompson on the line, and you'd rather have, not have Marshall or Dryling. Judd Heathcote's team trailing 89-86. No doubt. Coach Brown wants the ball in the hands of Turgeon and Hunter. Mark Turgeon, junior from Topeka. Riling inbounds to him. Darrell Johnson in man for man in the press. Turgeon gets it across. Quickly over to Thompson. Now to Archie Marshall. 89-86, 29 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Underneath, Alvin Thompson, the senior with 25 points and a five-point margin. Styles, short, foul on Pollock, that's it for the game. just eventually wore out the little guys. Larry Pollock with an all-around game tonight, fouled out with 11 rebounds and 16 points. His final game, perhaps, for the Michigan State Spartans. And another senior at the line now, the star of the second half in the overtime, Calvin Thompson. Kids were picked in the preseason to finish eighth in the Big Ten. And they've taken Kansas into overtime and had the lead with 20 seconds to go. And Mark Brown, the freshman at the line, shooting one and one with a two-point lead. Here's Thompson. Bounce pass, Marshall. Up and in. That should nail it. It's 96-86. Vernon Carr. Kansas got the scare of its young life. But playing before the home crowd, they advanced to beat North Carolina State on Sunday. Scott Stiles in his final game for Michigan State. Larry Brown relieved now with his two top scorers on the bench, Kellogg and Danny Manning. Turn to another senior, Calvin Thompson. Thompson.
Johnson wound up with 26 points for the night. Kansas outscores Michigan State 16-6 in overtime. Following its overtime win over Michigan State, Kansas outlasted NC State 75-67 to reach the Final Four in Dallas. Once there, the Jayhawks fell to eventual national runner-up Duke by four, 71-67. The Blue Devils were then tripped up in the 1986 NCAA Finals by Louisville, which won its second NCAA title of the 80s. The Michigan State-Kansas game featured two future first-round draft picks. In 1986, the Spartan Scott Skiles was selected 22nd overall by the Milwaukee Bucks. Shortly after leading Kansas to the 1988 NCAA title, Danny Manning was the first overall pick in the NBA draft. We certainly hope you enjoyed this presentation of Kansas's overtime win over Michigan State in the 1986 NCAA tournament. I'm Mike Gleason. Thanks for watching ESPN Classic.